There is something pretty cool about measurements. We use them all the time, especially when building and creating. It's what makes us civilized that we have standards and compare things. When thinking about measurements, it brings me to the concept of fractions, and what a wonderful world that is, hidden in plain sight. Elegance can be found in design and music, but it can also be found in the simplicity and fluidity of the fraction, so I wanted to explore that a little. Have you ever thought about that you could actually create your own measuring system if you wanted to? Thanks to the concept of fractions and bisecting. I mean, let's say I have a distance I like, just because it fits with how I build. So I take it and see how long things are that are in my space. I'm going to call this distance a Darwin. So this is two Darwins and this is two and a half. You should note that it really doesn't matter what distance you choose. A mile or a meter or a Darwin, any distance you like can be understood fractionally because I can bisect a line into halves infinitely. See where the metric systems are divided into 10, 100 or 1000, or a foot is divided into 12, a yard is divided into 3, an inch is divided in the only way that really makes sense to me. It is divided into halves. In fact, you can divide any distance in half infinitely or to any precision you need. I mean, that's pretty cool right there that you could make your own measuring system as fine as you want to. And because of that, you could measure out any, any distance exactly. It's just a matter of how finely you divide. Let's think about what it really means to divide in half as opposed to in 10. The inch and the millimeter are excellent examples of this. You have two lines of equal distance, and the top is an exploded inch, and the bottom is the same distance in millimeters, which is 25.4. Now, it's difficult for me to measure out exactly the millimeters without a ruler of some type, but we have 10, 20, 25.4. Now, for the inch, it's very easy to be precise. Instead of dividing by 10, I can now divide in half using a compass, so I don't need a ruler. So I have half, one quarter, one eighth, and so forth. So the fundamental concept of fractions is that you can divide in half and half and half and half. And that is very natural for us to do. Dividing in 10, on the other hand, is not. I mean, that's not to say I couldn't figure out what a tenth of a distance is. I totally could. However, I would have to bisect a line a couple of times first in order to get a distance small enough to work with. I mean, let's take this example here. This line is broken down into 32 parts. So we want to know how many 30 seconds each tenth is. So we simply multiply 1 tenth times 32 over 32, which equals 32 over 320. Now we want to stay in the 30 second scale, so we need to divide both the numerator and the denominator by 10, which gives us 32 over 10 over 32. And we can translate that into 3 and 1 fifths over 32. So that means that every 3 and 1 fifths 30 seconds is 1 tenth of that distance. And that could be any distance. So we have 1 30 second, 2 30 second, 3 30 seconds, and a fifth. And then we can add to that, so we have 1 tenth, 2 tenths, and so forth. And that's how I can use fractions to figure out what 1 tenth of a distance is. Not exactly that easy and natural, not like dividing in half, but you can do it. In fact, you can do it with any fraction you're looking for. If you need to know what 1 7th of a distance is, or 1 15th, it's the same process. It all comes back to the fraction, doesn't it? Especially when we are relying on ourselves to figure this out and not bringing out a ruler or some external product, which someone else created. Because I think it's really cool to understand that I, you, we have the power to create our own system if we wanted to, and it would be just as exact and reliable as any other system, and we could translate it too in relation to a known system like the inch or the millimeter. And then we could give someone else the formula and they could use it too if they wanted to. That's awesome! People always love the concept of creating and being creative. But then again, what is often referred to is art or making furniture or something like that. But what about something a little bit more abstract? Like your very own homemade ruler with its very own system. Fundamentally, it's all possible because of the fraction. And I love fractions. They are so cool and they're really fun to play with. I mean, it's all about how you translate them, how you read them. For example, 1 eighth is the same as 1 half here, divided in 4. So now we can mark that here in the 4 scale. 
Of course, if you want to look at it in the two scale, you can translate it to one fourth divided in two. Let's take another example. So you have five sixteenths and you want to place that on the eight scale. Well, then we would write five halves over eight, or you could translate it as two and one half over eight. So let's write down five sixteenths on the eight scale on the board. Now, what if we want to see this in the quarter scale? Well, that would be five fourths over four, or you could translate this as one and one quarter over four. So let's write five sixteenths in the fourth scale. So now you can see that these numbers are all the same. It's just a matter of how you play with them. We could translate five sixteenths to the half scale. One way to write that is five eighths divided in two. So you can look at the line here. That's five eighths over here. And if we divide that in half, then we get to the five sixteenths line. So let's write that down. Isn't that neat? If you look at this, it's easy to see based on how you divide and multiply fractions. Remember? Real quick, a little primer here. As an example, we have 5 eighths multiplied with 2. So that means that we multiply the 2 with the 5, the numerator, and we leave the denominator, the 8, alone. So we have 10 eighths, which is equal to 1 and 2 eighths, or 1 and a quarter. Division works along the same lines, however, now we multiply the denominator, the 8, with the dividing number, the 2, and leave the numerator alone. So that means we have 5 sixteenths, because 8 times 2 is 16, whereas when multiplying, we multiply the 2 with the 5 and leave the bottom number alone. And when you look at this translated line here, then you can see that all these numbers, 2 times 8, 4 times 4, 8 times 2, they all equal 16, which is why they all translate to 5 sixteenths, just written in a different way. It's so fluid, don't you think? One fraction translates into another, and then you can see certain connections. That's so cool. How about if we look at it in a different way? Let's say you want to add 1 eighth to 5 sixteenths. So now you can take them to the same level. So if we write this down in the 2 scale, which is the blue lettering, then it reads 1 fourth over 2 plus 5 eighths over 2. And then we can look at the 2 eighths line right here, which is the same as 1 quarter. And we can erase the 1 quarter down here and replace it with 2 eighths because it's the same thing. And then all the denominators are the same, which makes it easy to add. So combined, that is 7 eighths over 2, or 7 sixteenths. So 1 eighth plus 5 sixteenths equals 7 sixteenths. Of course, the main thing to keep in mind when working with fractions is to always stay in fractions. Because if you bring up a calculator or start working in decimals, you'll get lost real quick. Now, there's something about fractions which feel very close to us. It's not created by committee, like the metric system. It's based on everyday life, which is what I really like. It's natural. It's easy to bisect an angle, where it's impossible to trisect an angle. You would have to first bisect and bisect, like we did when we wanted to find out the distance of one-tenth. So fractions contain a sense of purity, um, a sense of history. Dividing things in half, and in half again, is pretty old. Most of our measuring and counting systems are based on it. Money itself has a history of the half. Two bits, four bits, six bits, a dollar is familiar to some. And the mile is usually read that way too. One eighth of a mile, half of a mile, and so on. But much of our world today is not based on the half. And in science and industry, it makes sense to use metric. But when it comes to everyday life, and when it comes to empowering yourself, then fractions are pretty awesome. And just to know that if you were stranded on a deserted island and you wanted to measure things out properly and get to work, you totally could. And it would be very precise and very accurate, as long as you stayed consistent. All you really need are two sticks to make a compass and a stick to make a straight line. It's all very Greek. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please share. And here are some other videos you may like.